Hi everyone, Titeki here. 2020 M1 MacBook lineup has come out for a week now. You probably have seen enough comparison between baseline 1299 MacBook Pro versus 999 MacBook Air. For $300 difference, we know that the MacBook Pro all have fully fledged M1 with 8 core GPU, but M1 on the baseline MacBook Air only have a 7 core GPU. Therefore, to make a direct comparison between them is quite unfair in this scenario. In addition, when people choose MacBook, spec and performance is not all they are looking for. Appearance and form factor is also an important consideration point. I personally would actually prefer MacBook Air's shape and lightweight than the one on the Pro. Also, touch bar has always been a debatable function in the tech community. So, here is a question today. Which Mac should you choose if you are paying the same amount of money? So, to find out the answer, here I choose the candidates between a uh, baseline MacBook Pro for $12.99 and the upper tier MacBook Air for $12.49. In this case, both machines have fully fledged M1 chip, both of them with 8 core CPU and 8 core GPU. Alright, let's dig in. The first category we are going to compare is the difference in appearance. On the top view, you could hardly tell the difference here. They both have the same Apple logo and the 13 inch chassis. On the side view, MacBook Air has thickness ranging from 0.41cm to 1.61cm, while the MacBook Pro have a unified body thickness at 1.56cm. Personally, I would prefer a sloped body like MacBook Air, because that downward slope just feels more natural for me to lay my hands on it and type. But it's a personal thing. Many people actually love the balanced body shape on the MacBook Pro. Next, let's take a look at the ports. On the left side, all the M1 Mac lineup, including the Mac Mini, only have two Thunderbolt ports. It's not even good enough for the daily work, so eventually you will need to buy a USB-C hub or dongle. On the right side, the 3.5mm headphone jack is still there for anyone who needs a firm wired headphone connection. After the shape, let's take a look at the weight comparison. MacBook Air has a body weight of 1.29kg, MacBook Pro is about 1.4kg. If you are planning to carry your laptop around, carrying one MacBook Pro will be very similar to carry both MacBook Air and iPhone 12 mini. So for someone who loves traveling light, MacBook Air probably can have a very very slight advantage here. Next section, let's take a look at display. On the spec sheet, MacBook Air has peak brightness at 400 and MacBook Pro has peak brightness at 500. However, that 100 brightness difference can be negligible in the real life experience. Let's take a look. On this particular clip, I set the brightness to maximum on both machines. There's a slight difference in color saturation in my opinion, but in terms of brightness, there really isn't much visible difference here. So in the daily usage, I think you should be fine with both machines. After the display, let's take a look at the uh, audio quality of both MacBooks. Apple claims that MacBook Pro should have higher quality speaker compared to the speaker on MacBook Air. I'm going to play a comparison clip I made. Let's find out if there is a big difference or not. Before I start, a small warning here. If you're on speaker or you don't want to hurt your ear, I suggest you lower your volume a little bit. Uh, the next clip is going to be loud. All right, the clip starts in three, two, one. All I have for you is a word. It'll open the right doors, some of the wrong ones too. Use it carefully. All I have for you is a word. Tenet. It'll open the right doors. Some of the wrong ones too. Use it carefully. There we go. Uh, I believe you can hear the difference here. Uh, in my opinion, MacBook Air sounds is louder. 
but the audio quality of the Pro is deeper and richer in comparison. Which one do you prefer? Let me know in the comment section. Next, let's take a look at the microphone quality for both of them. On the official website, Apple does claim Pro has studio quality mic with noise deduction. While Air will still have the regular microphone, let's find out the difference. We are on the Air first, and this is a quick test for the microphone quality. Apple does claim a Pro has a studio quality microphone, compared to Air does have a regular one, so let's hear the difference. Here we are on the MacBook Pro, and this is a microphone quality test, and I hope you guys can find out the difference. After that, let's go to the keyboard and trackpad section. Both of them use the same technology on the trackpad, but the trackpad on the Pro is noticeably larger. I would prefer a larger trackpad, because the bigger touchpad is much comfortable to use and pan on. The other difference on the keyboard is the touch bar. On the Pro, you will find the touch bar and touch ID in all models now. However, on Air, you can only find traditional function key and touch ID. Touch ID is extremely useful in all kinds of scenarios, while the usefulness of touch bar is very debatable. I used my 2019 MacBook Pro 13 inch for about one and a half year now. Except the first couple of days when I first got my hands on the machine, most of the time I barely use the touch bar. So for me, it's more like a gimmick function to look cool. Hence, the traditional function is much more comfortable to use for me. But I have to say, it's not as cool as the touch bar. Okay, enough of the outside, let's see how do they perform in the inside. Before I show you the number in the benchmark and the games, remember this time there is no difference in the M1 chip between MacBook Air and MacBook Pro. Both of them have fully fledged 8 core CPU, 8 core GPU. The only difference will be the fan. MacBook Air don't have fan, which may lead to throttle. In Geekbench 5, both of them had phenomenal results. MacBook Pro single core at 1728 and multi core at 7582. MacBook Air has close to identical results with a single core at 1723 and a multi core at 7536. They have close to identical results. If you compare them with last year's model, this year's M1 chip MacBooks are just blowing away Intel-based MacBooks. More than two times of performance jump. This is just amazing. On the Geekbench, both Mac are very quiet, and there is no temperature jump or any abnormal behavior. In order to see the actual difference in performance, let's test on a more demanding benchmark, Cinebench. Under Cinebench, both single-core and multi-core takes a while to finish the testing. MacBook Air holds on very good on single-core test bench. MacBook Pro stays very quiet during the entire single-core test. So for multi-core, until the last 10 to 20% of the test bench, we are starting to see some throttle on the MacBook Air now, and the fan on the MacBook Pro started to working now. Here is the result. Both of them achieved nearly identical results in single core. Both achieved near 1500 points. On multi core performance, MacBook Air reached a little short to 7000. While now we can see where MacBook Pro's fan shines. With one active fan, M1 on MacBook Pro shows performance number over 7700 points. However, the takeaway here is that I'm extremely impressed with the MacBook Air here. A fanless machine with the same single core performance with Pro and only 10% multi-core performance shortage than the Pro. Such incredible performance is just unbelievable. Now we know the benchmark of those machines. Let's see how they perform in games. To be honest, the gaming performance on this machine is actually quite tricky. First of all, most games don't have ARM version, so they need to convert using Rosetta. Secondly, even with Rosetta, the compatibility is not good. Some games just don't launch at all, and some of them have weird bugs. Steam constantly have trouble connecting to the server, and Epic Game crashes constantly. But fortunately, I do find some game to test on. And to those games that can be launched normally, they are actually very playable. Here is some gameplay footage comparison between MacBook Air and MacBook Pro. <laughs> Air supply? Simple air and turn on air from the 
Thanks to the same GPU core number, these two laptops basically have the same gaming capability. To be specific, on the benchmark of Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, MacBook Air achieved 26.95 average FPS, MacBook Pro achieved 26.79 average FPS, so there's basically negligible difference here. Up to games like Don't Starve, M1 handles them easily, but when it comes to 3D games, let's hope Apple gives us M1 with discredited GPU. Next, let's take a look at the storage, which the MacBook Air will give you the most value of. For 1249, you get 512GB in MacBook Air, while you only get 256GB in Pro for similar price. It will be a bigger deal than you thought if you plan to use it as your main laptop. I know it's a feature slash functionality with a storage topic, and when I purchase an iPhone, I always go for the base storage feature-packed Pro model. Because I know the base 128GB is going to be enough for me, and the upgraded feature comes with the Pro are actually quite useful for me. However, in the case of laptop, small internal storage can be an issue here. The 2019 MacBook Pro base model only has 128GB, which is impossible to survive. I can't even install a system update unless I delete Xcode and most of my essential applications. This year's Pro has 256GB in base model. The situation is definitely better than 128. But for only one week of usage, I have only 15GB left in my Pro. So why do we use up so much storage so fast? Because application nowadays are getting better and bigger. The video quality is getting better and better as well. 5 minutes of the 4K footage can take around 5GB of storage. Uh, if you want to play some games, Fortnite alone takes about 90 to 100 gigabytes to store. So for the same price, to get 512 gigabytes in air is actually very useful. Well, some may say, why don't you use an external SSD? It's very cheap to get and easy to use. To some extent, yes, external SSD is very useful indeed, but the convenience you get from internal SSD is going to make your life much more comfortable. External SSD can be very convenient for large file storage. However, when it comes to the essential application that you may need to use every day, it will be a big pain. Without enough internal storage, you have to decide which application you need to install on internal and which, ne which one you need to install on external one. Well, you have to deal with the trouble when you forget to bring your external SSD with you. Also, the speed on the internal and external SSD can be 9 days. For example, the external SSD I get from uh, SanDisk have write speed and write read speed around 350 megabytes per second. It's unfair speed for USB-C external SSD. However, let's take a look at the internal SSD of both machines. MacBook Air has read and write speed above 2700 megabytes per second. MacBook Pro has read speed over 2700 megabytes per second and write speed around 2500. The MacBook Pro is slower in writing, mainly due to the SSD size. The larger the SSD could lead to faster SSD writing speed. Nevertheless, both Mac's internal speed are about 9 times faster than the one on the external SSD. So the larger SSD size on the MacBook Air is definitely a lifesaver. Next, let's see how does it perform in the Final Cut speed test. Both machine handles 4K and 5K footage easily. Even, even playback to 5K footage at the same time gives no issue at all. And output time for 4GB of 5 minutes 5K footage is like this. MacBook Air takes 29 minutes and 2 seconds. And MacBook Pro takes 22 minutes and 1 second to finish. Which gives a Pro a 7 minute lead here. Finally, let's take a look at the battery. On paper, it's 15 hour versus 18 hour. Both are great, much better than previous gen MacBooks. But in reality, if I'm doing editing or coding with game engine like Unity, the battery life can be much lower. Around 7 hours for both machines, uh, with 30 to 40 minutes extra in Pro machine. So keep in mind, it's still very impressive for both of them. No other computer in this class can last this long for doing the same amount of work. However, if you are just watching YouTube videos, consuming content on Netflix, and editing uh, documents with medium brightness setting, 11 to 12 hours is very achievable for both machines. In terms of the charging time, MacBook Air has a smaller battery, 49.91 hour. Uh, Pro has a larger one, 58.21 hour battery. 
Presumably, uh, we should expect MacBook Air to charge faster than MacBook Pro. However, MacBook Air comes with a 30 watt charger, while the MacBook Pro comes with a 61 watt charger. After testing them out, the result is very similar. It takes 2 hours and 35 minutes for a full charge, and the Pro takes approximately the same, 2 hours and 26 minutes to a charge. 9 minutes leads for the Pro machine. It's not big enough to make an impactful difference. Alright, that's it. It's a quite a long video. I think the biggest advantage here for the MacBook Air is that if you don't really care about the touch bar and that 10% difference in performance in some extreme use cases, well, 1249 MacBook Air is actually a really good bargain for you. Consider it gives you a 512GB of storage and a close to perfect fully fledged M1 chip experience. You could also use that extra $50 difference to buy yourself a USB-C hub. However, if you are someone who loves using Touch Bar and doing most of your job with all kinds of demanding applications, the Pro will definitely be your choice. Just keep in mind, 1299 Base Model Pro only gives you 256GB of storage, which can be fed up really fast. That's it for today's video. If you liked it, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching.